everyone. I'm Chef Jocelyn from the Chrome Dev Tools team. This is a plate of fried rice I just made. To prepare this, you need garlic, rice, egg, anchovies, and tomato. These are the great ingredients that make this tasty fried rice. Hmm, it smells great too. You know what else is great? Chrome Dev Tools has great new features to help you better debug your site. Let us dive into this great feature together. First up, we have G for the grid tool links. Dev2 now finally has further support for CSS grid debugging. Yes! Say you have a grid with three defined areas, banner, sidebar, and content. Here is how the page looks like. In the elements panel, notice that there is a new grid batch added next to the grid element. Click on that to toggle the grid overlay and line numbers. You can customize the overlay further in the new layout pane. For example, you can hide the line labels, view the area names, or extend the grid lines for better debugging. You can even change the color of the overlay. What is even greater is when you animate the grids, the labels will rotate accordingly as well. And that is the detail. Go try it out. Next, the R for the Rendering tab and Sensors tab. Do you know you can emulate locales by setting a location? For example, I have an upcoming cooking class on 12 p.m. Christmas Eve, Malaysia time. I have an audience from all around the world. I would love my page to display the class time according to my audience time zone. Now, set the locations to Tokyo and refresh the page. The class time is now updated to 1 p.m. Tokyo time. This feature is handy especially if your site supports multiple language and time zone. Next, we added a new idle state emulation to support the idle detections API. This API allows you to detect inactive users and react on idle state changes. For example, imagine this page is a rice ordering kiosk. When the screen is locked, you might want to display a slideshow of your promotions. When the user is active again, redirect them to the ordering page. These state changes were hard to debug previously because you need to wait for the actual idle state to change. Now, spend no time waiting for that error again. Next, let's take a look at the new Disable Locker Fonts emulation. Say you define a font family Rubik in the font space rule, and set the source to load Rubik Lite locally when found, and fall back to the remote Rubik Black font if it's not. In the computed pane, you can see the current font is rendered using Rubik Lite font locally. During development, you might want to disable the local sources to properly debug and verify your web fonts. Let's try to do that and refresh the page. See. The font is now Rubik Black, loaded from the network resource. DevTools also added a new CSS media emulations to emulate prefers reduced data media query. In this example, we have this CSS code to skip downloading custom web fonts if the user turns on data saving mode. Enable the prefers reduced data emulation. See, the rendered font is now fall back to the system font area instead. Next. E for the Elements Panel Enhancements. You can now edit the styles created with the CSS in JS Frameworks and the CSS Object Model APIs. Here, we got a page with a few eggs. Let's say these are the CSS in JS code to animate them. Click and run the code, then right-click and inspect one of the eggs. You can now edit the animations in the style pane. These styles were not editable previously. Next. Did you spot a new button in the Styles pane just now? This little button lets you toggle the computed sidebar pane. Now, you can view both Styles and computed panes on the same screen. Good news especially for those big screen users. We added a group checkbox in the computed pane as well. This new checkbox lets you group the computed properties. Since I'm working on the egg animations now, this allows me to easily focus on just the animation properties that I care about. 
If you want to take a screenshot of the egg container, we have a shortcut for you. Click on the egg element and select Capture Note Screenshot. There, you have your screenshot taken. Sweet! The Focus Visible Pseudo class is a native CSS way to style elements that are in focus and need a visible indicator to show focus. You can now use DevTools to force and test the focus visible state. Next, we have A for accessibility enhancements. The Inspect Mode 2 tips now displays more accessibility information. Hover to the element. The Inspect Mode 2 tips indicates whether the element has an accessible name, row, and whether it is keyboard focusable. Use the new Emulate Vision Deficiencies feature to get a better idea of how people with different types of vision deficiencies experience your site. DevTools can emulate blurred visions and four different types of vision deficiencies. For example, Protanopia is the inability to perceive red and green color. The text color of both anchovy and delicious are not accessible, but it might still look okay for people with normal vision. Let's enable Protanopia emulations. Notice that the color contrast of both anchovy and delicious are becoming even worse now. The texts are almost unreadable. Go try out other type of vision deficiency emulations to experience yourself. Next, you can fix the low color contrast text with our color suggestions. Let's try to fix the color of anchovy. Select the element, open the color picker in the style pane. Expand the contrast ratio section. Here, we provide AA and AAA color suggestions. Click on the suggested color and see the color is fixed. It might be tedious to go through each element of the page and try to spot all the color contrast issues. DevTools is here to help. In just one click, the CSS overview panel helps you to identify all the low color contrast text of your page. Here, the report shows two issues of the page. Click on the issue. You can view the list of elements that have the issues. Click to focus on the element and fix it. The final letter T represents new tabs and panels in DevTools. Have you ever seen a console full of browsers warnings and you have no clue on how to fix it? The new issues tab aims to improve that. Open the console. A message will be shown if your site has issues. Click on view issues to open the issues tab. Expand the issue. It provides you more information, affected resources, and guidance on how to fix it. Next, you can now debug the Web Authentication API with the new Web Authn tab. Open the Web Authn tab, create a virtual authenticator, and watch it play the part of a real device. There's no need to carry around a bag with different authenticators to debug your implementation anymore. DevTools now support moving tools between the top and the bottom panel. This way, you can view any two tools at once. For example, if you would like to view the elements and the CSS overview panel together, you can right-click on the CSS overview panel and select Move to Bottom to move it to the bottom. This way, it's easier for you to view, focus on an element, and edit it without switching context. Last one, use the new media panel to view and debug media player information. Here, I have a page with a video player. Play the video and open the timeline pane. Try to pause, play, and fast forward the video. The video playback and buffering status are updated in real time. Together with properties, events, and messages information, this panel could help you identify potential media issues quicker. DevTools have some new improvements on WebAssembly and Secure Context Debugging as well. Check out the talks by Ingwar and Camille for that. Phew, that's all. Remember to try out these great new features. Every six weeks, I will publish the What's New in DevTools post and video. Don't miss the updates. Follow us on Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for watching. See ya. I'm going to enjoy my great fried rice now. Oh, do you know we have an engineering blog? 
go to this link to find out more. And by the way, my teammates, Tim, Jack, and Paul have a talk about how we upgraded the DevTools architecture to the modern web. Remember to check that out. See you next time. <music>